Enjoy watching him on the worldwide leader in sports. Longtime offensive lineman in the National Football League, Damian Woody, back here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Damian? Rich, I'm good, buddy. How you doing? I am doing well. So uh, let's let's hit on a, on a couple of things here, uh, you know, that you are personally familiar with. Uh, Belichick, how does he do it against uh, rookie quarterbacks so consistently? What, what what does he cook up? What have you seen with your own two two eyes, Damien, personally on this front? Well, 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 Rich, he's the he's the master of illusion. Um, you know, he just knows how to scheme up coverages. If you look at the Patriots' defense, the best part of the defense is in the back end in their secondary, and his ability to disguise those coverages along with being able to know how to break down your protections and rush and get after your quarterback. And so Justin Herbert has had a great year, probably going to be, maybe be the rookie of the year. But he had never seen anything like a Bill Belichick lay defense before. And what the what, and what the Patriots did, particularly on the defensive side of football was they created just chaos, rushing, you know, uh running what they call stunts and uh all different coverages. And when you're a rookie quarterback and you have to look at all of that, it's a daunting task. And the Patriots just, they just completely overwhelmed the charges. I mean, from special teams, I believe they had, what, two, two, two special teams touchdowns, I, I, I believe. And they just completely dominated uh, the, the Los Angeles Chargers. It was just a coaching, it was a coaching clinic, and I would advise anyone just go w- rewatch that game because if you want to watch a coaching clinic, watch Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots. So again, the, the, I guess just because we we've had uh, Brian Billick on this show many times, and I ask him almost every time to repeat the phrase that drives him crazy that Bill Belichick will take away the one thing that that uh, you need to win, like the rest of the coaches in the NFL would never think of doing that, right? That they're all dummies. But it does seem that Bill is able to do, uh, certainly against rookie quarterbacks, what other teams like, you know, it's not like Bruce Arians and Todd Bowles don't know how to do it. I mean, it, and, and he does it with a different cast. It's like just to say, do your job. He doesn't just wave a wand. How does he do it, Damien, you know? Well, I think, I think the difference is, is that a lot of coaches have their system. And they're stubborn when it comes to their system. Coach Belichick, he's flexible. He can bring anything at you at any time. He can have one minute. He can have four down linemen. Next step, he might. Next snap, he might have one down lineman and a bunch of linebackers and DBs. You know, he'll just throw out all these different looks to confuse you, and that's what he does particularly well with rookie quarterbacks because a lot of times they haven't seen these type of looks that Coach Belichick would throw at them. And um, and that's why he's, you know, he's had these rookie quarterbacks numbers. Damian Woody here uh, on the Rich Eisen show. Then why why isn't it? Uh, I guess you got to be Belichick, right? Because another spot where you um, used to play, Detroit hires Matt Patricia. We saw Bill O'Brien get hired in Houston. Um, the number of times Joe Judge's and, and and Brian Flores appear to be outliers here, but they're also guys that aren't offensive minded. Um, or uh, Patricia, obviously defensive-minded. Well, why doesn't it work when Belichick acolytes go somewhere else more often than not, Damien? Well, I think a lot of times what ends up happening, Rich, is everyone tries to emulate Coach Belichick so much that they don't – they let themselves go in the process. And I remember having a conversation with Coach Mangini um, after he was let go in New, in, in New York when I was there with him with the Jets. And one of the things that, that, that came up was, man, I should I, I should have I should have been myself. I should have, you know, had my own personality and, and not try to emulate Coach Belichick so much. And I think that's what happens a lot of times with with a lot of these guys who come who come from that, that tree is that they want so bad to take everything from New England, but they forget that they have to be their own man in the process. And sometimes they can lose their own way, and I think that's where you got to give guys like Brian Flores and Joe Judge. I think they're just—they are who they are. They're going to be themselves. Yes, they coached under Coach Belichick, but they're still going to be who they are. And I think players respect that—that that aspect from them. Yeah, I think I saw one of the Dolphins players come off the field after there was that bench clearer uh, against the the uh, the Bengals. I don't know who the player's name was, but the player went up. 
to uh, Brian Flores, who was probably giving this player an earful about his his demeanor during that skirmish. And Flores, uh, the player was giving Flores a fist pump, and he refused to fist bump back, like, you know, kind of reminding him, I'm still the coach around here. You know, um, it, it was a, it was an interesting moment, although Flores was also out there on the field, and you see Joe Judge just crushing it right now. So at least one New York team's doing it, right, Damien? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes, you could you could de- you could definitely say that, Rich. You could definitely say that at least one New York team is doing it. Joe Judge has brought a, you know, he's brought a no nonsense approach, very disciplined approach, uh, to the New York Football Giants. And those guys, Rich, those guys are playing hard as hard sure as heck out there. That's a ball club that, regardless of what their record is, you're not going to want to play them at this time of year because they are who they are. They're going to punch you in the mouth. They certainly are, are are playing very well. I got Damian Woody here uh, on the Rich Eisen show. Uh, let's get to the Jets now, because you uh, have been taking a similar posture on Twitter as I have as well on this show, and it's very difficult. You know, it's very difficult for me uh, to keep saying that a team who I want to see succeed so well should lose. Um, and uh, they came awful close. And I guess Greg Williams needs to be invited to the parade one day when Trevor Lawrence is picking confetti out of his beautiful hair. Um, but what 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 is going on? Do you think with these players? No one wants to lose them all. But what what do you think is going on with the Jets right now at this moment with this locker room, Damian Woody? Well, a, I would say there's an intense amount amount of frustration. You know, like you said, we you know in the media and I know fans talk about it. You know, as far as the Jets, quote unquote, tanking. There's no tanking when it comes to the locker room. There's no tanking when it comes to the coaching staff. And there's no tanking when it comes to, the, you know, the, like general manager. They want to win. They understand that, um, yeah, the situation is, is not great, but they're trying, to win every, they're trying to win every meeting, every practice, every game. And unfortunately, with, with the Jets, you have a situation where it's kind of a perfect storm. You have years of bad drafting, which has left the cupboard, you know, pretty bare as far as depth and just elite talent. And then you've got a coaching situation where it's just one of the worst in the National Football League led by, you know, led by Adam Gates. So this situation is going to get resolved. There's only four games left. They're going to dismiss Adam Gates. But, you know, I've said before, Rich, and I think you would agree, if you, look at, if you take a macro approach and look at the Jets, that's a pretty attractive job. I think Joe Douglas, the GM, has done a great job of kind of restocking the, the cover as far as draft picks, cap space. And so any, any person, any coach that's looking at this situation once the season is over, they're going to have their choice of, of, of a lot of good coaches out there. Well, that's another reason why I want them to lose as much as possible, um, to be honest with you, is because the best coaching candidates uh, will not be available to the Jets if they don't have the ability to choose Trevor Lawrence. I mean, to, if you sit here and say, you know, hey, we, we got the third overall pick, uh, but still come to a place that has been so dysfunctional over the last few years anyway. Or you could say, we've got Trevor Lawrence. We've got all these draft choices. It's the New York media market. Let's go. So who do you think would be the best coach to bring in to coach Trevor Lawrence if the Jets do actually complete the feat over the next four weeks? Damien. Rich, that's, that's, that's a tough, that's a, that's an awfully tough one. Cause there's a lot of, there's a lot of candidates out there. I mean, we've heard, you know, Eric the enemy, um, Robert Salah. I don't know if I want to mispronounce his name, but the defensive coordinator with the 49ers. Yes, Salah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Salah. Uh, the OC from the Carolina Panthers, his name is hot. You got, we heard, the, you know, we've heard rumors now, this, you know, today about maybe Bill Cowher. I mean, there's a lot of different uh, flavors of coaches that are going to be available uh, for the Jets. I tend to believe, Rich, this team needs a CEO type of coach. They need a coach that's going to repair the, the, the reputation of this franchise because right now, the New York Jets are a laughing stock. They're the butt of every joke around, uh, around the National Football League. They need a guy that's going to bring credibility, that's going to instill culture, that's going to be able to work well with Joe Douglas. Um, so, you know, for me, I, I, I just, 
I don't know if I want a, a hot coordinator. I need somebody who who who's going to be that CEO guy that can repair this rep, that can repair this reputation. Well, I mean, uh, Bill Cowher would obviously suffice over that front. I mean, he's going to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. He's, he wins every week, though, on the set of CBS. You know what I mean? Like that's that would be uh, that that'd be. Again, the only reason why he would ever do that is like, here you go. You've got all of these draft choices. You don't have to move. You live in New York already. And on top of it, you get Trevor Lawrence. Who wouldn't want to be hooked up at the hip with Trevor Lawrence? I mean, every single coach on planet Earth who's interested in having a job with all of the draft choices and, and again, the number one media market, who wouldn't want that? That's, that's why part of the reason why I want the Jets to keep doing this. And I feel for Sam Darnold, right? I mean, I totally feel this kid totally deserves better than to have this part of the conversation involve him. Um, and, and, you know, that, that's why I, I, I feel it's very difficult to have this, this talk, Damien, week in, week out. Yeah. Yeah. L- listen, I've been a Sam Donald fan the whole time. Um, but I, I just feel like the time has come where it's time to turn the page. I, I think that Sam Donald has been beaten up and battered. I think the Jets organization has failed him. Um, he hasn't played well. Um, anyone, any, anyone watching the Jets can clearly see um, there's some, there's a lot of deficiencies in, in Sam Donald's game. But I also feel like he's redeemable. Like he can be the things that no ail him right now can be fixed in another organization and under the right tutelage. Um, so, like I said, I think the, I think he's still a starter in this league, just not with the New York New York Jets. Before I let you go, Damian, I saw your tweet about how the biggest signing this offseason may have been the uh, Browns signing Bill Callahan to be their offensive line coach, uh, using that as the door. Uh, let's open the conversation here on how real do you think the Cleveland Browns are at nine and three. Uh, I, I, I listen nine and three. Bill, Bill Parcells, you, would, you know, would always say you are what your record says you are. They're, right. you know, they're a good ball club. I still am skeptical about the Cleveland Browns. Um, one of the stats that you know, to me, one of the most important stats is point differential, and the Cleveland Browns, I believe, is like negative fifteen. So yes, they're nine and three, but they they got a lot of work to do. I'm a big believer in their running game. I'm a big believer in um, defense, particularly their their front four. I'm still skeptical of Baker Mayfield when it comes to playoff time. Can he make those critical plays in crunch time to you know put your put your team over the hump? That's what I, I that's what I need to see. Damien, I appreciate the time. Thanks for the two cents. Enjoy your work on ESPN, and let's uh, let's do this more often. Thanks for the call. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Rich. You got it. I follow him on Twitter. You should, too, at Damian Woody right here on The Rich Eisen Show. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.